Well, welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming, everybody. I am your host, Blaine, and today we're picking up with some more Kenchi. Fox looks out over his base and sees it functioning, seeing everybody pulling their weight. Everybody working hard to make sure that they are on their top game. The Holy Nation is a lot less threatening when we see what's on the horizon. Fog has rolled in and set upon their outpost. It's gone now. The defenders of the military outpost have either fled or died at the hands of the Fogmen. Fox doesn't worry too much about that. The Fogmen have made several transgressions against our lands and honestly, they didn't stand a chance. As we look out, we see that we need to keep moving. Our momentum is growing. Our base is strong. Our people are stronger. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the Holy Nation farms that sustain the followers of Okrin. Today, we're going to put a chink in their armor. As we take a look, we have a few things to do today. We're going to go ahead and take a peek back at the Holy Farm, which we've already cleared out. I do believe that it is, it should be completely empty. It's not though. Um, just scrolling over it tells us that it's not. I want to see if the actual people showed back up or if it's just animals and stuff that are in the area. Ryoko has become a legend within the camp. Able to sneak in and out of pretty much anywhere without being seen. Even something as simple as this farm requires skill though. There's a lot of animals nearby that can smell Ryoko. The only place that we found people last time was inside the main structure. So we're gonna check there first. We have to be careful though. We don't want to start a fight. Now looking, it still seems empty. There's no one here, nothing there, nothing there. All right, so there are no people. The farm is still clear. That is really good to hear actually, um, because I didn't want to have to keep clearing this place out. As Ryoko finishes scouting the farm, we learn something valuable. The people have not resettled. The Holy Nation has not sent people back to the farm the farm is cleared out. That means we must head further inland to the next farm. Setting her eyes on the next farm, Ryoko begins to wonder how many farms that Holy Nation truly have. They must have vast amounts of them to sustain a high population. Taking out one may not affect them. This farm seems a bit bigger, so maybe it'll have a little bit bigger impact. Ryoko is unsure. She begins to wonder if the Holy Nation has prepared for such an event. If they have a stockpile of food, this may not have that much of an effect after all. Now, we don't know what's in this farm, and so we're going to try and scout it out. So she's going to head in and try and see what's here. It doesn't look like there's much. A couple large buildings. Some water, some animals. No people though. This was the same scene as we saw at the other farm. The people did not hang out outside. They didn't work outside. Ooh, here we go. We have a couple workers now. Let's take a look. So, we're going to pause here for a second and take a look. So we have holy farmers, holy farmers. So they are actually farmers this time. It doesn't look like they have slaves. That's good to know. Um, last time, none of the farmers were actually, you know, farming. They were all just hiding inside. I kind of want to see if I can get inside without any of them seeing me. Ryoko had managed to sneak into the farm, into the largest building. And what she found was a bit disturbing. This isn't just a farm. It's a training ground. 
There's training dummies all over the place. There's a prisoner's cage. A large number of beds. And some turrets on the top of the building. This isn't just a farm. This might be an actual outpost. That's something to worry about. Now there isn't too many people here. There's about seven or eight people here. Nothing too troublesome. But what Ryoko is wondering is whether it's worth interfering with this operation. Thinking about how many farms the Holy Nation might actually have leads to a different discussion. Is hurting their farms gonna actually hurt the Holy Nation or just the lower population? Ryoko is wondering if maybe we should leave the farms alone so that way the general population doesn't suffer. After all, at what point do they become the bad guys if they're making the population of the Holy Nation starve? The leaders are probably still going to be well fed. The military is going to still be well fed. It's only the commoners that are going to be hurt by this. After looking through the goods, the chests, the barrels, everything here on the farm, Ryoko has decided that this farm should be left alone. The people here are no militants. Perhaps the military use this place as a training ground or an outpost in times of war. Right now, these people just seem like they're trying to get by. Ryoko found a copy of the Holy Flame. And inside the back pages was a poem. Talking about the safety that the Holy Nation brings to the people of this land. Ryoko believes that the people here on this farm are not with the Holy Nation because they're zealots. They're here for protection. If they were to assault the people here, it would be proving the Holy Nation right. It would be proving that the people need protection from outsiders. Ryoko needs to consult Fox about this. There's some things we need to discuss before moving forward. The discussion between Ryoko and Fox was very brief. Explaining what she saw at the farm and explaining her feelings struck a chord with Fox. Ryoko was quite right. He never wanted to harm the citizens up here. It's simply their zealotry and their military that are causing a problem for folks. So for now, we're going to leave the Holy Farms alone. We will visit them and investigate each one as we pass them. And as long as they don't prove to be the fanatical purifying zealots that the Holy Nation seems to breed, they'll be left alone. For now, we're going to have to set our sights on a different destination. Once again, Ryoko is going to set out by herself. To the north lies another military base. As Ryoko sets out to investigate the next military base, She sees new Yankee and Shigar returning from their trek down south into the Shecklands. She waves them a hearty hello and goodbye. Excited to see that they made it back safely. She's excited to get her teammates back. <laughs> Exploring out here is fun, but it's quite dangerous. It'll be nice to have some teammates back. Much like the last outpost, this one is heavily guarded. But there are some differences. So, now that Ryoko is a bit closer, we can actually take a little bit closer look at this military base. I like the idea of assaulting this place. It only has one entrance, which means it's going to be very easy to either fight here or attack here. We won't have to worry about fighting from all sides. Now, it's kind of neat. If we take a look, we see that there's a longhouse, an armory, barracks, HQ and power station. That's it. We don't have all the different buildings that we had last time 
that are going to cause us problems with basically infinitely spawning people. So knowing that we're going to assault this place, we need to actually kind of memorize the defenses and what they're actually doing. The first thing I want to point out is that they actually have the turret manned. Right here, we actually have two people guarding. We have, what is it? We have a high paladin here and a high paladin here guarding these turrets. We have two paladins guarding the turrets over here. And I thought I saw someone on this one, but they must have walked away. So they're actually manning the turrets, which is, <laughs> well, that's very dangerous for us. Turrets hit hard. It's just that simple. So we need to make sure that we can take them out quickly or get out of their range. On top of that, their roaming patrols are going to be part of the problem for us. Now, assuming they have a large roaming patrol population similar to the out other outpost, we need to take this place quickly and then get out of there with prisoners. Um, I'm thinking that for an actual assault, our goal is going to be to knock their numbers down by 15 or 20 in one day. In doing so, we can bring them back to our base, lock them up, and then come back over here and potentially clear out the rest. Now, with our main group, the Breakers, we should be able to do that no problem. We have enough people and enough manpower that we can roll in, crush their forces, and get out. But I don't believe we can stand up to an uh, entire onslaught like we did last time where we just kind of hung around and let the patrols come back and attack us over and over again. I think that was a bad play on our part last time, so we're going to try and avoid that. Now that we see that they have at least four turret guards at all times, we can kind of plan for it a little bit better. So back at the base, we have several things that we can do to actually prepare properly for this fight. First and foremost, we actually have a lot of people working on the different machines and stuff here, primarily because we are trying to get the base up and going. Now, looking inside, let's see here, we should be able to have somebody running the building here. I want to take a look at our prisoners and see what that's like. Inside, we have this scenario. We have several, well, we have a couple people that are dying, one person dead for sure, and these six, I believe, are still at basically full health. Yeah, their health and everything reset, so I'm going to have to do something about that before we assault the base, because we want this area clear. So we're going to give everyone a chance to, we'll say, change their ways, give up their zealotry, and if they do, we can either let them go or find them a better life. If they refuse to give up on being zealots, well, that's what the corpse furnace is for. So, darker, but it needs to be done. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all of our people have proper weapons and gear. Now, when we were fighting last time, we ended up with a bunch of sloppy gear in our inventory because we were swapping it out in the middle of the fight trying to survive. So, we need to take care of that. I'm thinking that we're going to bring along more than one spider this time uh, not to fight i actually don't like them fighting i think one they're a pain in the butt to deal with i also think that they kind of provide an advantage to us that i don't like having and that they do kind of an aoe attack and it deals quite a bit of damage and it's just meh i, I don't like it so we're going to bring them along but what we're going to do is we're going to have them hang way way back they're not going to be involved in the fight at all they're going to be set to passive and they're going to be there literally only to pick up gear and then return it back to base here we are going to go ahead and clear out the inventory of our spiders and they're going to come along. They're going to be set to passive and they're not going to get involved in the combat at all. But we're also going to bring along a few of the people that are just kind of standing around doing nothing. Our gate is pretty well secure. We have plenty of turret guards and we have plenty of, fight plenty of fighters inside that can handle any fighting that might happen. But we also have some people that are just kind of standing around in times of war. We're going to bring them along and they're going to carry people back as like a prisoner chain. So that is going to be how we're going to do things differently compared to last time. Our main fighters are going to go in there with no gear. Well, no gear, geez. No inventory space is taken up and they're going to go in just fighting, fighting nothing else, no looting or anything like that. And as people drop, we're going to have people from our main group grabbing them, bring them back and throwing them in cages. So next time... We will be assaulting the second military outpost and we will do so with a much better plan and far more efficiently than we did last time. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this episode, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.